The Arizona Cardinals are Madden 24's worst team, and if I can't rebuild them and win a Super Bowl within five seasons, I have to waste my money on a Kyler Murray jersey and wear it in my videos for an entire week. I'm a Titans fan, man. I can't betray my team like that. And look at how bad this team is, dude. I'm gonna need a miracle. So this means we've got to win a Super Bowl by 2028, and we have so much work to do. Like, this defense might be one of the worst I've ever seen. But honestly, here at the start of the season, I might just try and trade a few pieces away just to acquire some more draft picks. Kelvin Beecham's a guy I really don't want. He's a decent rated player, so even if we could get like a fifth round draft pick, I would take it as a dub. What if I tried to get offers button? Apparently nobody wants some. Like, somebody's gotta give me like a fifth for him, right? The Patriots need a right tackle. How about a fourth round pick? I think that's a fair deal for a potential starter at offensive line. And it was accepted just like that. I mean, we sure do have a ton of draft picks to use this next season. I mean, my God, we have two first, a second, we have three thirds, we have two fourths, two fifths, and a seven. Now, should I try to use some of these now to go ahead and acquire some talent? I mean, we could use some defensive linemen at least, because our number one need is left in. Who would be the best option? I do like in franchise mode now that it tells you how many years are left on contracts when you're trading for a player. How about Greg Rousseau? I mean, I literally have zero idea how close this is gonna be and it's very very far away what if we found a player that they wanted though like sanders here and maybe throw in chris barnes he only has a year left on his contract i would absolutely love to get gregory here and it's in the green we have something to work with how about getting rid of dennis here because he's on four mil a year so throw him in that deal as well and maybe from here throw in like a fifth round draft pick so how about this package for a young stud at left in. Come on, Buffalo. You know you want it. It's getting closer. So how about instead of that fifth round pick, I do think we have duplicate force that we could use. Come on. Please be enough. Oh, I got a little bit closer. Bills are gonna make me play hardball. Now if we throw in one of those fifth round picks and it was accepted, we get ourselves an absolute stud at the defensive end position. I'm not gonna lie. That already makes me feel so much better because we have some young pieces here. We got Greg now. We have B DJ Ojolari, we have Zaven Collins, so we have a nice little base to build around. I don't want to trade any more picks though, so we'll go ahead and sim to the playoffs, and I think we just have to understand that this first year is going to be a massive L. But regardless, we got to focus on having a massive upcoming offseason so we can really begin building this team into a Super Bowl champion. So fellas, I'm not going to lie, I really did not expect a 9-8 season. I expected 4, 5, maybe 6 wins, but somehow we squeaked into the playoffs as a seven seed. Imagine what this team will be able to do once we're actually good. I mean, nobody looks like they've progressed, really, aside from Kyler. And boys, let me tell you something. Gregory here, up to a true 86 overall. But Kyler's a guy I just really don't know about. Like, should we move on from him and try to draft a quarterback in the first round? Like, it's a tough decision, and we'll have to probably make it this offseason. Because that's a fat, fat contract to hold on to when we could potentially have a rookie quarterback who produces the same on a cheap rookie deal for four years. Look at our young corner getting an extra upgrade. I mean, our offense at the end of the day wasn't great. Our defense, though, wasn't that shabby. I mean, that really is a pretty good year from Kyler. 31 touchdowns, 13 picks, 4,000 yards. Now, our running game is going to need some addressing. Like, that's a decent amount of touchdowns. 3.4 yards per carry, James. Hollywood and Rondell with great seasons, but look Look at Zach Pascal with nine touchdowns, almost a thousand yards. Zayvon Collins doing Zayvon Collins things. We're gonna definitely have to get to the quarterback more. But what I tell you, Greg, was a massive move. Without him, man, we might have got not even double digit sacks as a team all year. So Kyler actually did come 10th in MVP voting. So maybe if we do decide to trade him away, we could get a massive package in return. Now it's time to see how far we can go. Like I fully do expect to get first rounded here against a really good 49. Niners team away from home, but just the fact we made the playoffs is crazy. Yeah, we got absolutely obliterated. I am actually, though, so curious to see which draft picks that we actually hold. We hold number six and number 19. Question is, what are the odds I could turn number six into number one? And who has number one? The Saints. We traded away number six. Like, I'm gonna try to finesse this as much as humanly possible. Would you want James Conner? Like, take him off our books. I'm just curious. That's about 
about halfway, so we're probably gonna have to trade quite a bit. Maybe this, my friends, is where we actually trade away Kyler, because obviously I'm gonna aim to get a quarterback with the first pick if we get it. I do think Kyler's the only way we can get number one, but since that's the case, I just want to go ahead and wait till we get into the offseason. We'll just make a decision then. Guess it's time to see who makes the Super Bowl since it wasn't us. And at least the team that beat us made it, and they actually won it too. That means somehow in the next four years, I have to dethrone the Niners so we can win that Super Bowl so I don't have to wear a Kyler jersey for a week. I mean, the Niners did have a few big players retire for them, so at least that helps our cause. It's always depressing to see all the good players that end up retiring. I bet you guys can take a guess why I want the number one pick. All in due course, though. All in due course. First, we have to see what players we have to resign. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, am I gonna give Greg Rousseau a fifth-year option? Now, we do have some pretty big players we have to make decisions on. I think without a doubt, I want to bring back Hollywood. I mean, this is decent money, and he's super interested in coming back. I think this offer should be good, and he's coming back. I think with how bad our defense is, without a doubt, I'm gonna accept Zavin's fifth-year option. There's a lot of players with expiring contracts, but I mean, we do have 61 mil in cap room, so I mean, we don't have to be way too stingy. Like, I want to bring back the 73-rated left guard, even though he seems like he doesn't want to. Give him a low-risk deal up in a bit. I mean, if he doesn't accept it, it's not the end of the world, and he's coming back. Now, the only reason I think I'm gonna re-sign Greg Dortch is because he wants to come back. That means we should be able to offer him potentially a high-risk deal, and he accepts, and he's not interested, so maybe I shouldn't do that. Rashawn Fitton's leaving, too! Christian Matthew, medium-risk offer, and he's coming back. I mean, I guess we'll offer him because we have the money, but, like, I'll give you a high-risk offer. If you don't accept, who cares, and he's going to free agency. And the rest of these guys, they're just, like, not good enough for me to care. Although, I guess Pat was our starting center last year, like, maybe on a cheap deal. He's actually coming back. Which, since we're done here, that means we have over 50 million to spend in free agency. But before free agency officially starts, man, I just want to go ahead and try and acquire that number one pick, which does mean we're potentially going to part with Kyler. Only if we get a fair amount of value, though. I mean, look at that cap hit, dude. That would give us 90 mil to spend in free agency. See, I think without a shadow of a doubt, this deal works. I was just curious to see what we could get out there, but none of this really beats the number one pick. So I'm wondering if the Saints would give us a first and maybe even a second. I mean, I would love to get Isaiah Foskey back in return because we really need a right in. I mean, while we're at it, try and get a center as well. And maybe, just maybe, we could get Brian Breesey. Like, I kind of feel like this would be a pretty good return, especially because these three players are at our top three team needs. Maybe even get a first round pick from next year as well after all of that the saints have been over the salary cap the entire time oh no there's still a way to make this work though boys there's still a way to make this work let's see what sort of package i could get for kyler alone so the falcons might be our best bet. You're gonna have to give me a first from this year. You're gonna have to give me a first from next year. They just don't have the same player package that I could have got. Not really many players on this Falcons team that I even really like. How about two first round picks, Jeff Okuda and Drake London? Like, that's a decent trade and it's not even halfway we might have to try another team maybe the titans okay so this is so far off it's insane nobody really seems to want kyler how about literally a second round pick and a first round pick from next year and that's even declined what the heck it actually kind of blows my mind that that's literally all we got for a young 81 overall qb hopefully we can turn that now into the number one overall pick so how about our number six and how about the second that we just got come on now at least be sort of close at least it's in the orange i'm probably also gonna have to trade that first round pick that i just got this has got to be enough for number one got to be it's still declined it's got to be a player they want i forgot do i have to use one of my thirds they want to use one of my thirds they don't even want it how about a 2025 six and a 2026 six i mean come on that's a tasty package new orleans and they still decline <laughs> You best believe I'm giving these stingy boys their worst possible package. I mean, if this gives me Caleb Williams, I guess it's worth it. 2026 fourth instead. Come on, Nola. That's a joke. So what if we make that a 2026 
fifth in a 2026 fourth instead. Come on, this has got to be a null. Like, I don't see anything. What does that mean? Whatever, dude. We'll go ahead and make it a 2026 third. I'm gonna be so stingy, though, and try and get, like, a 2025 six back. Thank the Lord, finally, the number one overall pick is ours. So that means we should be able to get Caleb Williams, but now it is time for our first free agent class, which we have got to perfect, because we gotta win a Super Bowl the next four seasons. Now, the big question is what free agents are even going to be available? Hopefully some good ones, because we have some money to spend, especially after getting rid of Kyler. Okay, so there for sure is some big boys, like not the most deep free agency class, but my god, there's some superstars. Thought we have more cap room than that. Anyways, are you best believe I'm gonna try to get Nick Bosa? We need sacks on our team. Like, he's not very interested, but we'll make the offer regardless, which we're right up there with everybody else. You know what, Nick? What if I made it a freaking seven-year deal, man? Locking you down for seven years. We did take the lead, so we'll keep it at that for now, but we gotta be smart and not spend it all on just one player. Now, I am looking at Keenan Allen, and the only reason I am is because he's interested in common, which means he would probably take a cheap deal, although I don't think we can afford him, so uh, that's an L. I guess the smart thing to do is see which intriguing players are actually interested in coming, because they'd probably come for cheaper. I would kind of love to get Terrence Steele so we can get rid of DJ Humphrey, because he's so expensive. He can play left tackle. We would have no money left, though. Like, is this the last free agent I want to offer? Not really. Now, Frankie, I think would be a big fit, and I kind of actually do want to offer him. Isaiah Rogers would be intriguing, but I don't think we're going to have enough. I guess we need to just go ahead and see what these two guys do. Come on, Nick Bosa would be ridiculous. And he hasn't accepted anything? Yo, we signed Frankie! Now my question is like, do I just try this bidding war? Or like, should I just withdraw my offer and try to use that money elsewhere? I think I might have been a little bit too stingy with Nick as much as I want him. We can, we can spend that money somewhere else. Like, I do wonder if I could give Keenan Allen a lowball offer and he still accept, which is looking pretty good. Maybe I could get Christian Wilkins instead. I mean, he's another guy that does want to join, so maybe I could lowball him. And we're again his top offer, and I am going to give Jeff Akuda a very strange offer, but that's literally the only way I can afford it. Although, it says I don't anyway. Why don't you got to bump it down? What do you mean? I clearly have cap space. Hey, finally let me bid for him, but I don't know if that'll be enough. So again, we'll go ahead and just evaluate the offers. Keenan's still pending, but we did sign Christian Wilkins. Now, is Keenan another one I should just pull back on and then just go sign multiple elsewhere? Maybe I could get Odell for much cheaper. We'll give him, you know, a three-year deal. I don't mind that. Which we're the only team in for him. I didn't realize we missed out on Akuda. Isaiah Oliver, is that a guy I really want to spend money on? I mean, I guess why not? What about Puna Ford? Can we afford you? No. And we did successfully get both Odell and Isaiah Oliver. Not a real bad free agent class. But now it's time for our most important part of our offseason. I wonder who the heck we're gonna take here. And without a shadow of a doubt, the Arizona Cardinals with the first pick in the 2024 NFL Draft are going to take quarterback Caleb Williams. The guy is a generational prospect, and I don't say that lightly. Look at his key ratings. This guy is going to be the one to bring a Super Bowl to Arizona. Those stats already look ridiculous, and of course he came with hidden development. Hopefully that superstar X Factor as a freaking rookie. Curious what his overall is, though. The Patriots got Marvin Harrison. The Vikings get QB2. Now time to advance to our pick. We have another pick in the first round with pick 19. I mean, we could trade the pick away if we had a good enough offer. It looks like only a few teams wanted to trade down. Like, the Niners are offering a lot. Like, that actually is quite a bit, but like, is it worth it? I mean, that's just a lot of draft picks. Let me see if there's somebody I really, really want. Okay, now Raheem Sanders is a very, very good running back out of Arkansas. He could replace James Conner, which means we could get rid of him. I know Blake Quorum's really good too, but I think I gotta go Raheem Sanders. Top running back on the board. We could completely change our offense in just one offseason. Unfortunately, he comes with normal development. I think here, I'm just gonna go top tackle on the board. We'll go Eddie 
Dunlap out of Georgia. Hopefully, he has hidden development, which he does. So, a semi-dub. I do think all the player models are glitched here in the draft. So, disregard our players' looks. With our third round pick, I might actually look at a tight end here. Maybe he could allow us to replace Zach Ertz. He's on a massive contract as well. Unfortunately, he only has normal development. Now, I really, really, really do like the looks here of Derek White. Those key ratings look solid. Hidden development trait, we have ourselves a dub. It's normal, but he could still potentially be high rated. If we can just end this draft with like four, maybe five players, 70 overall or higher, I'll consider it a dub for how bad our roster is. Now, I really do like the looks here of this left guard. He's a little bit lower on my board, but I like his key ratings. Patrick Bataglia. Come on, please be a hidden gem. It doesn't look too good. Now, time for our seventh round pick. So, I'm not gonna lie. Nobody really looks too enticing. So, whatever I pick here is probably gonna be an L. We'll try Vince Lockridge, defensive tackle. If he's even like a 69, I'll take it. But now is really the moment of truth where we actually reveal what our draft class is overall is. I really freaking hope this isn't a massive L. Four, five, seventies. I absolutely beg, please. Okay, now. We hit 470 plus overalls. So we got some big ones in 78. Caleb Williams, Raheem Sanders isn't bad for a rookie. A good left tackle in the second. You know what? That's not horrible. I mean, the offense looks at least a little bit improved from last year. The defense, though, is where this team improved drastically. And we still could potentially make some moves here before the season starts. First thing is first. I want to see if we can literally get any value whatsoever for DJ Humphreys. That cap hit is ridiculous for a 79 overall. So if we could get anything in return, that would be a huge, huge dub. Unfortunately, no teams look like they can afford him. The Patriots are literally the only team that can afford his contract. We literally just swapped DJ Humphreys for Derek Nadi, which we did need a D tackle, and a 6 for a 5th, which freed up a heck of a lot. And now the other player that needs to finally move on is Zach Ertz. We have Trey McBride waiting in the wings, and I mean, Zach Ertz is costing us 12 mil a year. I mean, I would take anything back in return. And again, not many teams can afford all, but could maybe work something here with the Lions, which I know this ended up being a funky trade, but we get ourselves a really nice young lineman in return for somebody we were just throwing away. And that does actually remind me that there's one more player I do want to get rid of. We just drafted our brand new starting running back, so what's the point in having James Conner on 6.99 mil a year? Which I really don't think we'll get anything in return, but I will literally take anything. I know this looks like another really weird trade, but we got rid of about $10 million while also getting a rookie center with hidden development who's gonna start for us. Massive dub in my book. Now this offense is looking so much more promising. A lot of young talent around. At the same time, at least we got a halfway competent defensive tackle. Like Zach Moss will be a good backup running back for us. We need a backup at the end, so I think I'm gonna grab Dean Lowry since he is a scheme fit. We also do need a backup tight in. I think we're gonna go with Drew Sample. I mean, I can just grab a D-tackle out of free agency. We'll go with Javon Kinlaw. We're actually getting some real good quality depth. We're also gonna sign Jeremy Reeves solely because I had a ping pong class with him in college. And Tracy Walker, another pretty good veteran for the secondary. I think now is the time, my men, to see how good this team can do in season number two. I do think season number one was kind of a fluke. I don't expect to make the playoffs here. You give me one more solid off season, I think this team could potentially make a run for in season three. I'm telling you guys, I'm an absolute mastermind as GM. I really have no idea how we won the division over the reigning Super Bowl champs. We get rid of Kyler Murray and immediately have a top 10 offense. And oh my God, bro, a top five defense. Are you kidding me? Caleb freaking Williams with one of the best rookie seasons by a quarterback of all time. Like that's gotta be one of the best rookie performances ever. And even our boy Raheem Sanders, I mean, sub four yards per carry, but still a thousand yards, 10 touchdowns. And look at Zach Moss getting eight touchdowns on the ground. Now, catching the football, Hollywood Brown was massive, but so was Rondale Moore with 17 touchdowns. Like, our two receivers might have led the NFL in both of these categories. Now, Hollywood did lead the league in receiving yards. Now, receiving touchdowns, Amari Cooper just beat out Rondale Moore, but that is insane production. I told you guys, our very first move was gonna be a game changer. I told you guys, Garrett Williams was turning into a lockdown corner. 
Caleb Williams as a rookie gets the six most MVP votes. I didn't even come in the top 10 for coach of the year. What are you smoking? But at least Caleb Williams beat out Drake May for offensive rookie of the year. I mean, my God, Caleb Williams already a superstar X Factor. The offensive line slowly but surely progressing and the defense is really starting to look nasty. I mean, we already got the team up to an 83 overall across the board. Imagine what we can do in just another off season or two. Hopefully we can continue on this pace because I really need to win a Super Bowl in the next few years so I don't have to waste money on a Kyler jersey. I mean, he's not even on our freaking team anymore. Now, the big question here is how far can this team actually go this offseason? Like, if not this season, it's still a young team. And we got first rounded again. But I'm telling you, one more offseason like last and next year, we're gonna be a Super Bowl contender. Hey, I got an achievement. I swear this game loves the Cowboys. Now, rightfully so, we have Rondell Moore's dev trait go up. Pretty positive that Greg Rousseau turned into a superstar. Unfortunately, I do think Buda Baker went down from superstar to star. Let me cook up one more good offseason and let me tell you, we'll be in that Super Bowl next year. Now, who do we have to re-sign this year? We have a ton of cap room, but we have some big players to re-sign here. Buda Baker's not even 30 yet. Of course, we're gonna try and bring him back. Problem is, he has no interest, so we're gonna have to give him a fat, fat contract. I really hope this is enough because if it's not like I don't think we'll ever get a better talented strong safety. We'll submit it and he's coming back. It might have been an overpay, but we couldn't lose Buddha Baker. It even gave us an achievement. Let's go. Let's first tackle Rondell Moore. Since he is interested, I think this just medium offer should be good. No question about it. He knows we're building something special here. I mean, I guess we should try to bring Will back. Hopefully he'll kind of take the minimum offer here and he's coming back. I can't let go of a quality corner who is a star up the offer just a little bit no doubt about it we still have 77 mil but still a lot of players that i need to try and resign i mean i'll give you like a three-year deal just don't leave us thank you rigoberto kazir white has no interest in coming back but like i'll give you an offer not cool let's not have javon kinlaw leave us I and mean, i guess we could sign a better d tackle i'll offer anyway and he's coming back now a lot of these guys are the ones that just signed a one-year deals i don't mind having them leave and trying to replace them with better players. Because let me tell you, I am so excited to spend our $70 million in available salary cap this free agency. Hopefully there's good free agents here though. Okay, there's some absolute monsters out there. You best believe I'm gonna try and sign a Monraw. He's an X Factor. He's young. He's interested. I mean, it's gonna cost a lot, but my God, dude, we'll give him a six-year deal. That's not good. I think we gotta find a way to get ahead of the pack. Give you a six-year deal, you know, we'll up this a little bit, up to like 11 and a half million dollar bonus, 11 and a half million dollar salary. Look at that, dude. Come on now. If we get him, that's a game changer. Hassan Reddick to play on the left side. He's interested. I'll just give him like a decent little offer. And it looks like we're battling with the Bucks. When you're a winner, man, it looks like everybody wants to come to you. Now we do really need D tackle. And I think Eric Armstead's our best option. Who wants a one year deal? We'll actually give you, why not a three year deal? I know you're a little bit older. I really hope this guy accepts. D tackles our worst position. Now, how about cornerback? We really need a star corner. Mike Hilton, are you that? Are you star enough to change our defense? Like that. This guy would be better because he's younger. I mean, I'll offer you another three-year deal. And we're way ahead on him, too. I mean, do I try and sign Joel Batonio on, like, a little two-year deal? I mean, this could be huge, dude. We barely have enough money, though. If I upped it to, like, a three-year deal, he'd be 36. I mean, that's fine. He'd probably still be, like, what, an 83, 84 at that point? Like, we're going all out these next few years. If we really can get all of our targets here, I'm telling you, we're a Super Bowl contender immediately. Oh, gosh, man. The click of a free freaking button's gonna determine all. Looks like we signed three out of our four targets. So Eric Armstead's the only one still considering the offer. Oh, Hassan Reddick, he chose the box. Hopefully Eric Armstead will accept our deal. Oh no, it looks like he went elsewhere. It's okay though, there's still some good players out there we can make some moves on. I mean, BJ Hill's still out there. I mean, he's a little bit younger too, so maybe this would actually be a better deal. I mean, we're by far the number one offer he has. Now, should I sign Khalil Mack to like a little 
Mickey Mouse deal just for the heck of it? I mean, I wouldn't mind giving him a little two-year deal. Don't really know, though, if I have money for anything else. I just hope these two guys accept. And we got both of them. Let's go. Our team's up to an 85 overall now. And we still have the NFL draft to go. If we can get a good draft class here, I'm telling you we're going to be unstoppable. With the first pick here, here's a cornerback that was projected to go top Five. Am I getting trolled here? Like, do I go with one of these guys? Like, there's a bunch of quarterbacks left, but no. I think I'm gonna go with the cornerback that's projected to go in the top five. Like, it can't be that bad, right? At least have hidden development. Please, don't be normal. Don't be normal. He has hidden. Why did he fall all the way to me? I'm so curious to know what that overall is. Now, I have to say again. This left tackle looks absolutely ridiculous. Like, I don't know where he'll play, but we'll find a place for him to play. Unfortunately, it's normal. I thought for sure he was going to be a monster. I could really use, like, a defensive tackle or tight end here. This guy, Trent Atkinson, looks pretty pretty good. Honestly, there's no in between. He's gonna be really good or really, really bad. Hidden development, I'm smiling. I'm not smiling. Now we don't have another pick until the fifth round. There's like no good defensive tackles on the entire board left. This middle linebacker is another one that's either gonna be really, really good or probably pretty terrible. And I guess we'll really have to wait to see. Now this guy was a projected second to third rounder and he's available in the seventh. Like, why not just take a chance on him? He's probably gonna be absolutely horrible though. Honestly, with that class, I'd be okay with 270 plus players. I'd be ecstatic with three. Okay, so we got two players 70 or above, and that corner is an absolute monster. I mean, I'm taking this draft class just for the corner alone. Honestly, I am so excited to see how this offense can perform this year. Like, that receiving core is ridiculous. And let me tell you, man, this defense, I think it can be special too. Honestly, the biggest need probably on the entire team is maybe a star tight end. I mean, maybe we could use a star middle linebacker or a star D tackle. So I want to try to make one move here before the season starts to make the team as good as humanly possible. I know we just signed him, but I feel like this guy we can just ship on because we got that young corner who can be our number one. I feel like we could also get rid of Elijah Wilkinson. So what could this deal bring us back? I am willing to part ways with a first. I mean, some of these are good. DeAndre Swift in our offense. But I mean, a first round pick for a running back Kayvon Thibodeau could be huge. I just don't know if any of those deals really intrigued me enough. So how about a first or cornerback, Elijah Wilkinson and Khalil Mack, for Isaiah Simmons, Kayvon Thibodeau, and John Michael Smith. Interested to see what they have to say, and it was accepted straight up. I think that right there is a massive, massive game changer. Actually, kind of hilarious bringing Isaiah Simmons back. Man, I can't really find a good deal for a tight end, but I think I'm happy with what we've done. This team is what 100% a Super Bowl contender, right? Honestly, anything less than 12 wins this season, I'd consider a disappointment. Um, I'll tell you guys something. I for sure did not expect a 16-1 season. That's one of my best seasons in a rebuild ever. No big deal. Just finished with the best offense in the entire league. And defensively, I don't know what that means. Oh, I should have known. We had the best defense in the league too. So, fellas, I do think getting rid of Kyler Murray was the correct move. 5,000 yards. 43 touchdowns to only 8 picks with a 74% completion percentage. Raheem Sanders although like not great average yard per carry like still is productive and no big deal we just went out and had 3 1,000 yard receivers we almost had 4. Our rate at pressuring the quarterback has increased quite drastically since I took over I have yet to have a player win the MVP in any video yet. Caleb Williams had had to have won it no Patrick Mahomes how? How does that even make sense? I mean what are we talking about? We won more games, threw more touchdowns, threw for more yards. Rigged award. And bro, look at how much our offense has already improved. The scary thing is the entire offense, aside from like maybe one or two players, are extremely young still. But this defense is just stupid. Look at that cornerback. is already an X factor. Bro, that's insane. We got him at pick number 21. This team has just got to. And I mean, they have got to win the Super Bowl. Luckily, we have a first round bye, but first step 
up is to find out who we have to play in the divisional round. It's the Cowboys. They're not great, but like the game loves them. We'll take every upgrade possible before taking on the Cowboys. I swear if we lose our first game three consecutive seasons, I'm a cry. I'm honest to God gonna cry and we get a slim, slim, slim victory. And oh boy, time to take on the old division rival. Time for revenge from season one. Come on, bro. Our team is too good to lose. We have home field advantage. We only lost one game all season long and we get another victory advancing into the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Of course it had to be the freaking Chiefs. And let me tell you something. Their roster is as stacked as ever. Rasheed Rice has made it to a 90. We do have this slight overall advantage, but just like, please don't tell me. We've made it all the way to the Super Bowl just to lose. I can't believe we've already made it here in just three seasons with the worst team in all of Madden 24. Maybe the Cardinals need to hire me in real life. But the job is not finished yet. We still have to win, man. We still have to beat Patrick Mahomes, which we take a 7-0 lead. And of course, they answer. We're going to answer right back, regain that lead. We got the 21-7. Keep it going. Of course, they score. There. It's not going to make it easy. And oh my gosh, this is going to come down to the wire. It's a tight ball game. Patrick Mahomes gets the ball again. What is going on? Score. Please score. Please score. OT. We, we won. We won. Did we win? Did we win? We won. We won. Let's go. It is 100% official now. Patrick Mahomes goes down. Caleb officially avenges that tainted MVP award. But in just three seasons, we have officially taken the Arizona Cardinals, the worst team in all of Madden 24, to now Super Bowl champions. You're welcome, Cardinals fans. Hire me. Now, hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, you can click right here to watch another video that I promise you was actually a hard challenge in this one.